Welcome once again to In Search of Christianity, brought to you by Bible Talk. And once again, on behalf of Mark, Alice, and myself, Hi. we want to greet you in the wonderful, the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Amen. Christ. And um, we're, we're going to start a new study today. In the Valley of Allah. Uh-huh. Uh, we've, we've completed, we are completed on the, the uh, study of the Book of the Prophet, Prophet Amos, which was uh, 24 sessions, and it's still up on the Bible Talk website if you want to see that. But yeah, we're going we're to do this, and this may be the way we go for a little while, doing kind of subjects on topics rather than an entire book line by line, mm-hmm. although we'll do this one line by line. Mm-hmm. But I want to remind you before we do that the reason we do this, you know, Paul wrote to the, the Apostle Paul wrote to the church in Rome and said, whatever was written in earlier times, was written for our instruction. There's a purpose to these studies. We're not trying to become Bible scholars. We're trying to become lovers because the goal of our instruction is love. Mm -hmm. The goal of all of this is to learn more about God's love for us, that we might have more and more love in return for him, that we would live a godly life. There's purpose to the study. It's not to get a degree it's not to be able to quote more scriptures and show how what a great Christian you are. It's about being instructed in how we should be living. Okay? Because when God searches our heart, he's going to be looking for his, for his love. word. His love and his word. Mm-hmm. Um, so the other, the other thing is, the, the purpose is that we become more and more bold mm. in operating in the things of God. And I think this is probably a good topic to help us do that. It's about when the Christians were in the Valley of Allah. So if you'll join me, and by the way, I keep saying by the way, it's a great idea to have pen and paper, pencil and paper, so you can jot down notes, uh, questions, comments, which you can then send to us at office at BibleTalk.com. I got a question. Yeah. You just said Christians in the Valley. Yeah. Okay. I thought the Jews were there. Okay, the people of God. How's that? Okay. <laughs> but my topic is actually about Christians in the Valley of Allah. Okay. Okay. Yes, it was the Jews. It was the people of God, all right? My concern for today, since the Word of God is for our instruction today, we can't affect anything they did back 3,000 years ago. But we can certainly learn how to live when we are facing giants in the Valley of Allah. Okay? Mm-hmm. Okay. Make a note. All right, so if you open your Bible, and I pray you have a Bible, it's a good thing to bring to a Bible study. In, in 1 Samuel chapter 17. Okay, and while you're doing that, or before you do that, Brother Mark is going to ask God's blessing on our time together today. Well, Lord, we just thank you for your word. And all of the stories portrayed in there are absolutely true. And we just thank you for the instruction that they provide us in order to learn more about you and your love for us. Amen. 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 I'm glad you worded it that way because um, this is obviously the account, the historical account Mm -hmm. of David facing Goliath. In the Valley of Allah. But too often it has become nothing more than a children's story. Correct. Okay? And this is a powerful lesson of God speaking to us so we learn how to live. Okay? It's more than a little story. It's a historical record. All right. 1 Samuel 17, verse 1. Now the Philistines gathered their armies for battle. And they were gathered at Sakah, which belongs to Judah. And they camped between Sakah and Azekah and Ephes de Mimim. Now, my, my, I'm reading from the New American Standard, and it says, which belongs to Judah. That's kind of a misnomer. The word belongs is not in the Hebrew in the Bible. Mm-hmm. Now, it certainly may seem like it's implied until you test it against the Word of God. Remember our study on ownership? Stewardship, stewardship and possession. Mm-hmm. The land belongs to the Lord. Right. Okay. It belongs to God. 
David wrote and said, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, mm -hmm. the world and all those who dwell in it. The valley of Allah and the mountains, the hills on either side, they belong to God. Amen. All right? That's right. However, he gave the land to the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to possess. Right. But there's a difference between Almost. owning it and having possession of it and stewardship of it. Right. Remember, in, in Exodus, God spoke to the people and he said, I will bring you to the land which I swore to give to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I will give it to you for a possession. Mm -hmm. I am the Lord, Exodus 6, 8. And later in Leviticus, he says, Hence I have said to you, you are to possess their land, and I myself will give it to you to possess it, a land flowing with milk and honey. I am the Lord your God, who has separated you from the peoples. Leviticus 20, 24. So we're to have possession of it, but don't forget that it belongs to God. But get the point here, all right? Regardless, the Philistines were trespassing, mm. okay? They were trespassing on God's property. Now, I can say, don't take that too personally, because it's not, it's not about you, it's about him. But the fact of the matter is, we should take it personally because we have been entrusted with it, and we are there to stand firm against the enemy, right? Yes, all right, in verse 2 it says, Saul and the men of Israel were gathered and camped in the valley of Allah. That, by the way, that means Oak Valley in Hebrew. Mm -hmm. A nice name. That was the name of our Christian school that we started many years ago, the Oak Valley yes. Christian Academy. Okay. They, they, they there, and they drew up in battle array to encounter the Philistines. So the Israelites have gone there, and they're in the valley, but they're not in the valley. They camped on the mountains, on the hills on either side, mm -hmm. All right? The Philistines stood on the mountain on one side, while Israel stood on the mountain on the other side, with the valley between them. Then a champion came, mm -hmm. came out from the armies of the Philistines, named Goliath from Gath, whose height was six cubits in a span. He had a bronze helmet on his head, and he was clothed with scale armor, which weighed 5,000 shekels of bronze. He also had bronze greaves on his legs and bronze javelin slung between his shoulders. The shaft of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and the head of his spear weighed 600 shekels of iron. His shield carrier also walked before him. Uh, regardless of what your translation you're using, I hope you get this. Goliath was big. <laughs> I mean, picture a tank, right? And without doubt, Many of the enemies that we face in our daily lives can look mighty big. Mm -hmm. The enemy can certainly look scary, and he wants to intimidate you and to be scary. So thank the Lord that it's written that we walk by faith and not by sight, mm -hmm. as it says in 2 Corinthians 5, 7. And like the Lord, we are being trained not to judge by outward appearance, because even now... Because, like Paul wrote to the Romans, for whatever was written in earlier times, where I just quoted a minute ago, was written for our instruction, so that through perseverance and the encouragement of Scripture, we might have hope. Romans 15, 4. When you face the enemy, okay, regardless of how big they look, how, how terrible they look, this word should give you encouragement and hope. Mm -hmm. Because it's not about you versus the devil. Because Jesus has already defeated. defeated him. Amen. God's word, as Paul wrote to Timothy, is training us in righteousness. In verse 8 it says, He, speaking of Goliath, stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel and said to them, Why do you come out to draw up in battle array? Am I not the Philistine and you the servants of Saul? Choose a man for yourselves and let him come down to me. If he is able to fight with me and kill me, then we will become your servants. But if I prevail and kill him, then you shall become our servants and serve us. Again, the Philistines said, I defy the ranks of Israel this day. Give me a man that we might fight together. Now remember, not 
long before this, not long, uh, and it's in first, it's in the eighth chapter, right? Or yeah, the the Israelites had come to Samuel, who was the prophet of God, and said, "Give us a king that we might be like the other nations." Right? They had rejected God as being king over them, because they wanted a king who would, and this is a quote, judge them, who would go, who would go out before them to fight their battles. That's First Samuel eight twenty. Yes. And who did they pick? <clears throat> they picked a person that was taller, the yeah. tallest guy from from central casting out of Hollywood. <laughs> that's exactly right. I mean, that's what they did. They picked so, the, the best looking guy, the tallest guy. He said were, his his head was above everybody yeah. else's head. But they they wanted they wanted him. They wanted a king so that they could be like the other, like the Philistines. You can't out Philistine this Philistine. You wouldn't want to. I mean, you, you'll know that by the end of this account. <clears throat> I promise you. Okay. So, I mean, you can see the results here. But the battle is always about who you're going to serve. Right. right? There's only one that we may serve because as Jesus taught in the Sermon on the Mount, no man can serve two masters. That's right. But that was the challenge. It's not, about, it's not really about the land. Goliath is saying, if I win, you serve us. If you win, we'll serve you. Mm -hmm. It's about who, it's always about Servitude. who are you going to serve. In Romans 6, 16, Paul wrote, Do you not know that when you present yourselves to someone as slaves for obedience, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin resulting in death or of obedience resulting in righteousness? You're either going to serve the Lord God Almighty or you're going to serve the devil. And I'll tell you what, you don't want to do that. So the Philistines wanted their champion to fight Israel's champion because the enemy is stupid. Or well, he thinks that we're stupid and will forget the battle plan. Mm. You know, there's, there's a thing, rules of engagement. There's, there's battle plans for everything. There's contingency plans. You know the battle plan for us? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> In Isaiah 42, starting in verse 10, it says, Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing his praise from the end of the earth. You who go down to the sea and all that's in it, you islands and those who dwell on them, let the wilderness and its cities lift up their voices, the settlements where Kedar inhabits. Let the inhabitants of Salah sing aloud. Let them shout for joy from the top of the mountains. Let them give glory to the Lord and declare his praise in the coastlands. The Lord will go forth like a warrior. He will arouse his zeal like a man of war. He will utter a shout. Yes, he will raise a war cry. He will prevail against his enemies. Hallelujah. That's the battle plan. That's and that's the champion. Hallelujah. <laughs> but I get ahead of myself. Okay. That's the battle plan. Praise God. Sing. Shout. It wasn't about King Saul in Israel. That's why the Philistines didn't recognize that. It was about taking on God. That's right. In verse 11, it says, When Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Now, this is interesting. Yes. It says, when they heard him. Mm -hmm. Remember, this guy looked like a tank. Right. He comes out onto the battlefield. This man, I mean, literally, he's a giant, a giant. And he comes out onto the battlefield screaming and hollering. That didn't scare him. Not until they listened to him. Until they listened to what he was saying. Mm -hmm. It says, when they heard the words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Romans 10, 17. That's right. But Jesus said, be careful what you listen to, because fear also comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing the word, and fear comes by hearing the world. And there is an L of a difference. And I knew I couldn't slide that one by you. <laughs> okay. The word or the world, you're going to choose who you listen to, all right? Now, that was true even for a man, a man of God, a man after God's own heart, like David, as faithful as David, who's our man in this account. Later on in his life, 
probably because of the treachery of his own son Absalom. He wrote in Psalm 55, I'm, I'm reading 3 to 6, because of the voice of the enemy, because of the pressure of the wicked, for they bring down trouble upon me, and in anger they bear a grudge against me. My heart is in anguish within me, and the terrors of death have fallen upon me. Fear and trembling come upon me, and horror has overwhelmed me. I said, oh, that I had wings like a dove, I would fly away and be at rest. Mm. Terrors of death, fear and trembling, and horror, because he listened to the voice of the enemy. Now, this is an aside, but it's an important aside, right? Right? What do you think that the Lord was doing while the army of the people of God stood on a hillside with their knees knocking, dismayed and greatly afraid? What do you think God's doing? You know, think about when the, the apostles were on the boat with Jesus going across the Sea of Galilee and a storm arose. And they said, don't you care that we're perishing? Don't you know what's going on? What was God doing here? Well, I'm going to tell you because I can actually tell you. Okay. The Lord laughs at Goliath. Because he sees the end of the matter. Here's what it says in Psalm 37, verses 12 to 15. The wicked plots against the righteous and gnashes at him with his teeth. The Lord laughs at him, for he sees his day is coming. The wicked have drawn the sword and bent their bow to cast down the afflicted and the needy, to slay those who are upright in conduct. Their sword will enter their own heart, and their bows will be broken. God knows. He knows the end of the matter, and the end of the matter is better than its beginning. Amen. Praise God. What were the verses on that 37? Psalm 37, verses 12 to 15. 12 to 15. And by, by the way, I mean, it says that the sword, their sword, pierced their heart. will pierce. Whose sword chopped off Goliath's head? Goliaths. That's right. David didn't have a sword, right? Mm -hmm. He went on, he picked up Goliath's sword and chopped off his head. The Word of God is true. The Word of God is always true mm -hmm. when you That's choose to live it. It, it is yeah. because God watches over His Word to perform it. Yeah. Everything He says happens. A absolutely. So, I mean, don't, if you find yourself, and listen, the flesh is the flesh. You know, sometimes if you, if you come into a situation that's very dangerous, don't be surprised that your knees are knocking mm -hmm. because they're just stupid flesh. Mm -hmm. Tell them to shut up. Tell them to stop knocking. You have to, you have to confess God's word. Yes. You have to believe it in your heart. You have to confess, confess it with your mouth. And you have to do it. It doesn't... There's a constant battle between... Forget about the Philistines right, for a minute. Right. There's a constant battle between the flesh and the spirit. And the Israelites were losing that battle between their flesh and their spirit. So there are times when you're facing an enemy, when you're facing a problem, and that problem may look absolutely gigantic. Put yourself in mind of, of this account and know that God knows what's going on in your life and that God is your deliverer. Tell your knees to stop knocking Tell your palms to stop sweating and start to praise God. Start to sure. give him thanks in the midst of it. Sing a new song. Shout to God with a voice of joy. And then he'll do the battle. And he'll do the battle. Hallelujah. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Yeah. In verse 12, <clears throat> back in 1 Samuel here, it says, Now David was the son of the Ephrathite of Bethlehem in Judah, whose name was Jesse. And he had eight sons. And Jesse was old in the days of Saul, advanced in years among men. The three older sons of Jesse had gone after Saul to the battle. And the names of his three sons who went to the battle were Eliab the firstborn, and the second to him Abinadab, and the third Shema. David was the youngest. Now the three oldest followed Saul. But David went back and forth from Saul to tend his father's flock at Bethlehem. I want you to know that David, from the beginning, was faith, faithful to his calling, his ministry, her, tending his father's flock. Mm -hmm. It was, without doubt, preparation in life for the ministry that God would call him to 
to tend the flock belonging to his heavenly father. Mm -hmm. He was tending his father's flock. And when he came, became king, he was tending his heavenly father's flock. Mm -hmm. There may be many things in your previous life, your previous life meaning before you were born again, mm -hmm. that God will use in your life now. There was mm -hmm. Peter was a fisherman. Yes. And Jesus said, I'm going to make you a fisher of men. Mm -hmm. Okay? So thank God for, for all of these things and just surrender to him and let him have his way. Hmm. So the Philistine drew near morning and evening for 40 days and took his stand. Did you ever notice that the enemy seems to have no fear of the Israelites? Yeah. Perhaps they had heard of the disobedience of Saul and the Lord removing his anointing from King Saul. Mm. Okay. This isn't their first time at the baseball game here. Yeah. It appears to me that news gets around in the spiritual realm. Mm. They they might have heard what would happen, okay, when Saul was disobedient to God. And God did remove that anointing from him, right? Mm. You know the story, the account of the seven sons of Sceva mm -hmm. in the book of Acts. Right? It's uh, Acts 19. Right. When they, the, the apostles are going about and they're casting out evil spirits by the power of God in the name of Jesus Christ. And these unsaved, unbelieving sons of Sceva, the priest, go out and they try and cast out a demon out of a man. So they say, you know, we're, we're casting out, uh, uh, kiss, trying to cast the demon out. In the name that the apostles are using, in the name of Jesus. Well, evil spirit answered and said to them, I recognize Jesus and I know about Paul, but who are you? News had gone out about Paul. That's right. How did they know about Paul? I'm going to tell you how they knew about Paul. Because the demons were running around saying to one another, Boy, if you run across that apostle Paul, you better watch out. <laughs> News spreads fast. Hallelujah. <laughs> It says, let us not grow weary in well-doing, mm -hmm. for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Galatians 6, 9. We have to be persistent because Satan is persistent mm -hmm. and we have to be all the more so. Mm -hmm. Okay? He goes about as a roaring lion seeking who may be devoured. He's, he did, now, you know, I've been doing this a while. And I'll tell you right now, I know he doesn't give up easily. No. He is always there. Sin is knocking at the door, right? Jesus taught, but the one who endures till the end, he will be saved. Matthew 14, 24, rather, 13. We have to press on. We have to persevere. We got to be strong in the Lord and the strength of his might. Don't give in. Don't give up. Stand. Having done all, stand. Stand firm against that enemy. No matter how big he is, no matter how horrible or terrible he looks, Stand because firm. God is, will deliver you. In verse 17, it says, Then Jesse said to David his son, Now take, take now for your brothers an ephah of this roasted grain and the ten loaves, and run to the camp of your brothers. Bring also these ten cuts of cheese to the commander of their thousand, and look into the welfare of your brothers, and bring back news of them. For Saul and they... And all the men of Israel are in the valley of Allah, fighting with the Philistines. Really? Really? Fighting? You see, a report was going back about the fight. Yeah. The fight was like a, a group of children, little children on a schoolyard. Nah, 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 nah. You know, they may push and shove and call each other names. That's all that was happening. Where was the fight? Where was the bloodshed? It wasn't. They're just making a lot of noise. Forty days. We, we for forty days. We need to be ready to engage in the battle. Okay, it uh, it, it says in Proverbs fourteen twenty three. In all labor there is profit. Mere talk leads only to poverty. Mm -hmm. You gotta do it. Don't just talk about it. You have to do it. The kingdom of God does not consist in word, but in power. Paul wrote that to the Corinthians. First Corinthians four twenty. We need to get to that place where we are a people of action. And our action is based on what God speaks to us, and we move without fear. 
I said, you know, in the very, very beginning of this part, this part of our study, a couple of years ago, in search of Christianity, that Christianity is following Jesus Christ without consideration of cost or consequence. Mm. Yes, I remember that. Because we are looking forward to the great reward. Mm. Okay? This is a battle. It's warfare. I pray that you're prepared for that. Okay. So David arose early in the morning, this is verse 20, and left the flock with a keeper and took the supplies and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the circle of the camp while the army was going out in battle array, shouting the war cry. He goes there and he finds the people of God. They're, they're dressed in battle array and they're shouting the war cry. No fighting going on. Mm -mm. You see, getting dressed in the battle array and shouting the war cry or putting on your Sunday go to meeting clothes and walking into your pretty church building and singing the songs along with a great band doesn't mean that you are fighting. Right. The battle is out there in the valley. Mm -hmm. We gather to get equipped, trained, and prepared and encouraged to go out into the valley and do the battle. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, go out into all the world and proclaim the gospel. You know, I, I just, uh, just before we started, I, I was reading the news and I got an article. We have, a, I've been in contact with a, a number of pastors over the years in Nepal and been invited to go there and circumstances just wound up we never did. Well, the Nepalese government just passed a law that makes it illegal to try and, not to try and convert, to share the gospel. Right. With anybody, that's it, it. Is a crime to share the gospel because they they'll be converted. Well, because well, so many have be a chance, so many have been converted, mm -hmm. and even I don't know if what it's like. It's probably terrible for people who live there, but they're very specific that if foreigners come into the country and try and, and spread the gospel, there's a there's a, a five year jail sentence, and I think a hundred thousand rupees uh, oh. penalty. I mean, it's very very severe. You may think that things are getting better and better and better, but to have a world view. I mean, see things around the world. They're getting worse and worse. This is Satan. This is Goliath coming out onto the battlefield. This is a satanic rage, challenging God and the people of God. We have to have the boldness. The, the righteous are as bold as a lion. The wicked, they flee when no one pursues. We need to get to that place where we're going to stand for the Lord, Okay. And be ready to pay the price, whatever the consequence. Okay. Too many Christians don't understand that it's a battle. Verse 21. Well, you know what? I'm not going to have time to go any, any further here. Oh, We're running out of time already. Already. We're just getting into but, it. <laughs> but be back next week for the next part of this. It's not just an exciting story. It is an encouragement for us to live the victory in Christ Jesus. So, Father, we thank you, Lord God, that men like David have gone on before us. Lord, that, that we can see the faithfulness of people that, that have lived in your word and trusting you. And, Lord, by the power, of your, the power of your Holy Spirit, I just pray that we would join them and follow you as we should. Well... Till next time, God bless you and goodbye. Bye, Jesus.